jumping The water's fine, it's a celebration No, we ain't stressing cause we on vacation Not a care in the world today, baby What is up, everybody? I hope everyone has a great day today. We are here on the Most Important Things Podcast, episode number six, with me, Kevin Barbers, and my man, my co-host, Bobby AGT. How's it going, my friend? It's going well, man. Happy to be here with you. Episode six, we made it. We're still going, going strong. Uh, Today's episode is brought to you by our official sponsor, Smith Anchor Apparel. For all your personalized, customized apparel needs, t-shirts, hoodies, I don't know, maybe sweatpants. I mm-hmm. can use some sweatpants. Yeah. Um, clocks, uh, mugs, everything. Anything you can think of. Anything you want to name a John, give him a shout. Robert D. Smith, Stephanie Smith of Smith Anchor Apparel. We appreciate you guys sponsoring the podcast. Truly appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. So, big day. Yeah. What are we going to get into, brother? I think we're going to get into some positivity and motivation. You know, the stuff we get into every week, our favorite thing to talk about. Mm-hmm. We're also going to talk about setting goals. We're going to talk about behaviors, good behaviors, bad behaviors, habits. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to have Mr. Kai Kamaka on the podcast, UFC Featherweight. Yeah, I think we might even be having him on first, right? I believe so. First things first. Um, I think it's about the time. Is it about that time? I think he's... Uh, I'm always nine. Uh, Travis, are we good to go? Yeah. All right, let's get it going then. All right, cool. I'm going to change out of this shirt. I'm a little sweaty. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Without further ado, we have our featured guest coming on the show right now. uh, Coming off a huge win at UFC 252 over Tony Kelly. 1-0 UFC featherweight rising star, Mr. Kai Kamaka III. How's it going, my man? It's going good. It's early in Hawaii, but (laughs) you you always got to do interviews early in Hawaii. Oh, shoot. Why is that? Just because the time, the time difference, you know, mm. I don't know where, they, where everybody's calling from. No shoot, yeah. <laughs> so in Vegas, in Vegas, it was pretty good because I was a little bit closer to, to people and I was a little bit more awake. But. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because right now it's right now it's one o'clock here. It's seven o'clock there. So uh, right, seven o'clock. Yeah. So yeah, that's you no- guys actually just so happy. Like I didn't even set my alarm, but just so happened I woke up and I seen, I seen the first message. I was like. I don't even know. Like my alarm didn't even go off. I'm like, damn it! Oh, man. I woke up. <laughs> Those are the best though. When you your your you know your brain just knows when to wake up. So maybe yeah. you were uh, I don't know. You just had it pre in your head. Like I got a podcast. I'm gonna do tomorrow. Boom! You're waking up. Boom. So yeah. we want to uh, thank you again for yeah. not only coming on the podcast but coming on the podcast this early because you know I know you're a busy man. You're a UFC fighter, so I'm sure you have a a busy schedule for the rest of the day. And like you said, started off with uh, an interview. So get it out of the way and keep your day rolling um yeah thank you guys for having me oh man it's a pleasure it's a pleasure you are actually our third guest uh you know because we recently just started this up so um so yeah so i want to ask you about your your fight over uh tony kelly uh you, man you had a a well-rounded performance you showed pretty much every aspect of mma you showed how durable you are you showed how um your your cardio was i mean cardio is a skill so i mean I want to ask you how do you how did you assess that performance? Um, I honestly assessed it from one perspective, like yeah, because everything technical, like you're gonna make mistakes in a fight, right? Fighting's not perfect, so I mean, I didn't assess it from that point of view, especially especially in, it's in the UFC, all this like, so adrenaline is gonna be higher. The only thing I did assess it from was yeah, it was how fast how fast paced it was and. How did I finish off the fight? Because that alone dictates how I, how I do technically, you know. And I, I was, I, I I was I was pretty. I guess I was, I I would say I was pretty happy with um with the performance based on the, like the way I assessed it because, like, it, it was entertaining because I had the cardio and um, you know, I was I was I mean I yeah I made mistakes but it was just because that's. It, it it was it was just it was in the fight you know that's that's fighting yeah. and it ended up the way you know I mean couldn't have gone any better I mean other than me maybe I would have I could have just ran right through him but maybe that was not 50k worthy you know I mean that mm-hmm. 50k worthy was what happened so I I can't I can't complain and yeah my um my cardio is like my bit my biggest like I I stress that the most yeah. you know and there's something like um something we all can work at but some guys just got it better than others so yeah, very true. I, I push every day like 
um, my heart beat rests. And I, you know, it's just due, due to that because you don't know when you're going to run into those wars and you need to be able to get through them. Mm. Well, that guy was tough. I mean, Tony Kelly, very tough dude. I mean, he's fought a lot of good guys. He's got a win over Levi Moles, a uh, great guy outside of the UFC. So that was a huge win. So, I mean, you didn't have an easy fight for your UFC, you know, your UFC debut. A lot of guys, they come to the UFC with a, an easy fight. That, you know, right off the bat, you had a tough fight. So, I mean, I think I think you definitely made a statement mm. to show everybody that uh, – you know, you're here to stay, and uh, and you're, you're putting Hawaii, you're showing why Hawaii, you know, uh, has a lot of great fighters coming out, you know, coming out of Hawaii, and uh, and man, I'm excited to see the rest of your career, and I'm seeing, uh, you know, see, you know, all your all your future accomplishments, my man, because I know it's it didn't it wasn't easy to get here, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. um, maybe talk a little bit about your journey. Um, so you started your MMA career at bantamweight, correct? Yeah, and now you're at featherweight. I, is is featherweight your uh, is yeah. going to be your home, or talk about you know where you think your 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 career is going to play out when it comes to weight classes? Yeah, I think featherweight is is my new home. I mean, I've been here like since last December. It's my my last fight in Bellator. I went up to forty five, and that was after um. So that that was that's in three fights now. I've been at forty five, mm. and um, shoot, like. It's, 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 that was after a surgery. Mm. Um, and then prior to that, so I had two shoulder surgeries. One was like a ladder J procedure, which is like a major procedure, uh, shoulder reconstruction. And then, um, my right side was just on labrum tear. Mm -hmm. And then like for, um, but for, for massive, like, yeah, for mass amounts of time, um, I'd have shoulder surgeries, keeping me out of fights and stuff like that and um do i think it, but it, i've accumulated these injuries and i feel like it was due to weight cutting you know i was mm. cutting a lot of weight in wrestling in college and kind of cut my wrestling career short as far as like um competitively in um to where like i couldn't compete as as good as i wanted to because of i was, I was always injured mm. um so when I started, when I, when I started fighting, it was just like holding, holding me back. Like, boom, I have to sit out one year. Mm -hmm. Then I took another fight. Then I sit out a whole, another, another whole year. And then boom, I get a surgery. Then I sit out another whole year. It's like, mm -hmm. so yeah, I mean, it, it's mainly due to injuries. And I mean, of course, when you cut more weight, it, it, um, my training um, was like, uh, you only you, you'll say it like you only can look back and say it after, but like my training, like mentally, was more to cutting weight. Like, yeah, I was just showing up. I wasn't retaining anything. When you look back at the camps, I didn't feel like I was learning much, just because. Um, at the time, and at the time, I did feel like I was learning, but like you look back, it's like, dude, I didn't even improve that much because I was trying to cut weight most of the time. Right. And then all the while I'm getting injured. So I mean, yeah, 145 is my new home. I mean, I'm not I'm not small at all for mm. like I was like I was like kind of too big for 35. I'll I'll get up to like um 160, 163 when I get in the cage. And like most of it was water because like in two hours I could get up to like 150 mm. just off of fluids. Wow. I wouldn't even eat for a couple hours. So yeah, so it, I mean I felt like like crap. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure that these last few fights, you've had a, a more healthy weight cut and you've been able to improve your skills a lot more in these last three or four fights. Oh yeah. I mean, I've seen, I've seen my fighting style, not fighting style change. It's just like the actual fight change because I've always fought, like I've always been like this kind of, this kind, this kind of fighter. But when you're cutting a lot of weight and you get in there and you feel like, like you haven't f seen that weight in like four weeks or six weeks, it's like, yeah, I mean, your fighting style is going to change because, yeah, you may have run a lot, but um, so for, I, I don't know what it is, but fatigue sets a lot. Mm, yeah, that sets in a lot faster when you're cutting weight. Mm. So, I, like, I would try and, like, it's crazy because holding guys down at 145 is a lot easier than holding guys down at 135 for me. Mm. Oh, wow. Just because, like, like I, I felt weaker. Like guys felt like wor worms at thirty five, and now I can kind of like at least stick them. You know, what I mean, even takedowns are a bit easier. Hmm. So that's what's up. Yeah, one forty five. One forty five is home. No doubt. No.
There you go. Um, I want to ask um, about visualization and if that's something that you utilize when preparing for a fight, because our whole podcast is about motivation and success and positivity. And then obviously MMA. And we talk about how visualization is super important in what we do, um, especially when setting goals and things like that. So what's that like for a fighter and, and um, you know, mentally preparing yourself for being in the cage and then having that come to fruition when you're actually there? Um, shoot. I mean, I, vi- I visualize a lot, um, but I don't try to visualize the, the result. Like, I try to visualize, I mean, yeah, we all want to win, right? We all think right. about winning and we hope we win. But as far as, like, when I visualize that fight, I try to visualize certain spots in that fight and how I want to fight in in those instances. And, you know, be, uh, especially when I watch footage, like, I, I it's hard for me to watch footage of, like, of a guy that I'm gonna fight because then you have to visualize you fighting him right right after that mm-hmm. but then so I mean I'll watch it one time just to see the way he moves like his feet and stuff but then it's hard for me to visualize me fighting him, uh, him fighting me like that because I'm a totally different guy right right so it's not like he's gonna fight me this different than what he's fought you know same like me like if you fought watch past footage of me you're gonna have a hard time because I fought that guy the way I was I was I had, I felt like I had to at that time, yeah. you know, and I yeah. fight you, then it's going to be totally different. So visual, yeah, visualization is big. I mean, like I, I, I try not to visualize like short term, you know, short term, I'm trying to think of like, yeah, I'm, I'm visualizing like only certain spots, not the result. Mm-hmm. But as far as visualization, like I use it more so for like, for like long term and right. like where I want to be in like, in like, um, like, I would say right now I'm visualizing where I want to be in, in, at the end of next year already and like in two years, yeah. you know, as, as far as the steps I want to take. So, I mean, it is, it is big because you need, you need, you do need that for goals because visualization, visualization helps you, you know, uh, be, be a little bit more realistic. <laughs> yeah. No doubt. Um, hey, how's your, how's I mean, the body? Just, how's the body? Uh, all, uh, you know, no, no, lat, no nagging injuries from your last fight or how's, uh, how's, how's your um, health? No, not 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 now. I mean, for a bit, I was like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not hurt. But I mean, I was still dealing with some stuff. Like my foot was kind of like still bruised for like mm. at least, like, I'd say like almost a month after. It was, um, where I would kick and I would feel it, and then, uh, but then now, now it's pretty good. Mm. We have I haven't sparred much after. The, I mean, I sparred like three times after the fight. Um, I mean, since the fight. So, but no, yeah, no nagging injuries or whatnot. So, no doubt. Yeah. Um. So, so yeah. So I seen the your your opponent Tony Kelly. He already has a fight coming up. Is there a reason why, uh, you know that that he's already getting the call to, to fight? Is is anything in the works for you yet? Or I mean, you know, that's why I asked you. Yeah. You know, is is your health good? Because I mean, it made me wonder when I see someone that just got beat. I don't know if it's matchups or I, I don't know what goes through. You know, goes into matchmaking, but it's like. I want to see Kai Kamaka fight next. Like he's the one that impressed me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm kind of, I'm actually jealous. I was <laughs> like, I mean, of course, yeah. I, got, I want to get that kid. Mm. I want to make money. I want to, I want to take my kids on trips. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I was jealous. I'm like, what the heck? This guy gets to go to Abu Dhabi right off the back, and he was like two weeks after our fight. And I'm like, bro, I want. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. can we get? Like, but then I think that's a matchup case. Mm-hmm. Um, He's he's at one thirty. He's going to one thirty five now, or he's trying. I don't know. He's trying to. I think he made that weight before. So yeah. I mean, props to him. I hope he wins. Makes me look good. Yeah, yeah. and he was a big dude. I mean, shoot. So you're just kind of just waiting on the call, just just staying ready and yeah. uh, and just waiting on the call. Yeah, like I'm I'm keeping my heart. Rate. I'm making sure that like I check my lungs. and I keep my heart rate up. Like I'm doing my sprints, everything because. You don't know. You don't know in this game. Yeah. Like, hey, might, I might get called right after I do this podcast. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, hey. that. We'll have to have you back on so we can announce it. You know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, speaking of matchmaking, uh, do you have an ideal next opponent? Um, anybody you're you're eyeing for? Um, shoot, no, not not really. I mean, somebody's in, somebody that's gonna get me more more notoriety. Somebody yeah. that's gonna fight me. Um, but shoot, really, just, just take the whoever's the next guy because I don't wanna, I don't wanna take the short road. You know right. what I mean? Like, I wanna make the money that way, picking out everybody that I can, mm-hmm. um, thinking about who's next. You know what I mean? I don't wanna jump any lines just because, I mean, I'm I'm I'm, I, I'm thinking like from a 
you know, like I'm real, real humble by it. Like, I'm, I'm the newest guy. I don't, I don't have any ground to call out anybody. Yeah. Um, but so you just want to stop from the mm-hmm. bottom and just earn, kind of just earn your stripes. Yeah. I mean, I'm going to, yeah. And then at the same time, I'm thinking like, I'm going to make my, my money's going to, you know, accumulate better that way. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you jump the line, boom, you, you lose one. And then, you know, you're, you're on the cusp of like, getting cut because you try to take a chance that you shouldn't have yet. Mm. You mean, so yeah. I just want to get my next win. I don't know. Mm. Just continue to grow as a fighter, continue to improve your skills and, and, and just uh, yeah. showcase them in and out of each fight. No doubt. So whoever doesn't have a fight. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So I want to uh, fight like next week. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like I said, you, you're looking in shape. You said, you you know, you're ready to go. How how many weeks out could you, if if realistically you got to call a fight next week, you think you could, you know, make 145 and, and get in the, you know, get in yeah, the. Yeah, I mean, I think I could make 140. Like, that's the, that's the, that's the thing. Like, that's where I, I went up to, you know what I mean? Like, for my career. Yeah. Like, see, like, if you told me 135, mm. there's no way I'm making that in, in two weeks, one mm. week. Mm. Or, uh, you know, I could make it probably four weeks, mm. um, but but one forty five, like it's weird because my body my body like walks around like a little bit lighter than what I did at one forty five, one thirty five. Oh wow! Um, just because it, yeah, it's not holding. I'm not freaking killing myself. Yeah. So it naturally, like I walk around like one sixty eight, um, but I float back between like sixty three and sixty eight. At one thirty five, I'd be like like 65 to 70 mm. like wow. yeah wow so what a crazy game huh? like what yeah it's weird because so I, I so I, I go 145 and my weight doesn't even spike up that much it's probably because i'm not trying to i, I don't know what it is mm. but at the pi they say that's kind of normal mm. and you know it's kind of uh, that's the reason um I'm, I'm staying at 145 it's a lot safer you know it's a lot it takes a lot of time for my kids to, and my wife to be at 135. So, I mean, mm. and a lot more sane too. Like, I got to do a lot extra stuff just for 10 more pounds. Like, it's crazy. So, I can make that on a week's – I could make it on a week's notice. It's, it's, it's Yeah, it's really weird that I say that. But, yeah, I can make that on a week's notice. No doubt. So, I hope you get the call. I hope you can uh, – yeah, I hope you get the call to get a fight. And then – because that's what they're looking for. And this, uh, this Abu Dhabi, uh, you know, the fight island, it's like, can you fight next week? Yes, I can fight next week. You get on next week, you win that fight, you press performance. You're like the next comms at Shemaev, and you're fighting another week later. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You're just starting to bang out fights. Um, yeah, so I was, I was like taking – I was taking my morning leak, and I got on my phone, <laughs> and then – the guy, uh, what's his name? Jemayev? Kenny. I, oh, oh, Casey, Casey Kenny. Kenny. Yep. Yeah, he's already rebooked. Yeah. I was like, what the Is he fuck? rebooked? Yeah. Oh, my so, God. I yeah, he's that. fighting. He's fighting Nathaniel Wood. Oh, wow. Oh, that's October a great 24th. fight. Whew. Yeah, I think October 24th or on a big card or it might be October 31st. Either one of those two oh, dates. Geez. But, so, yeah, they're fighting. So, Kai, so maybe, uh, you know, there's always something to learn from those guys that are, like, you know, they're just very vocal. So if you – let's say you do get a next fight. I mean, do you plan on, you know, getting on the mic and being like, yo, you know, really making a name for yourself, not just with your fighting? Because it's like we're in the entertainment uh, era, as they say now, you know, the Conor McGregor, the Ronda Rousey. Do you have, like, uh, you know – I know you're a real humble guy, but it's like sometimes we need to get out, get like, get outside of our shell and be like, yo, because like Ke- Casey Kenny, I mean, he got on the mic. He said, I want to fight and boom, got a freaking fight. So do you, uh, do you have anything yeah. to maybe like uh, get on the mic and just start spitting some fire, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, I mean, when I have that, like, I, honestly, I'm, I I would tell you guys if I had a, a name in mind, but I can't, I don't, I don't even, like, I don't even know, like the guys I, what, like, I should be fighting next. So right. in my division, so can't tell you but like if when my next fight you know I'll, like right after my fight i'll ask my manager who do, give me somebody you mm. know give me a name you know, I'll, rolling. and i'll rolling. roll with it i mean oh, yeah. yeah like casey kenny didn't bash anybody by any means he just mm. said i want to fight you know what i mean i want to fight next week i mean but if you give me a name mm. i'll say that name and then you know say that right after yeah just give me a fight i'll fight this guy that's it. You know I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I don't th- need to talk about his family or anything like that. Yeah, I'm gonna throw a name at you because this guy recently just fought, okay? And he was getting beat the whole fight. And the guy that he was fighting tends to dominate the whole fight and always loses it in the end. And uh, I think this would be a great fight. I don't know if you saw the fight. I'm sure you did. I'm sure you keep an eye on the featherweight division. But um, Damian is it Damian? Oh no, I'm sorry, Jackson. Damon. Damon Jackson. Damon. What do you think about that fight? And how do you feel like you match up with Damon Jackson? 
I feel like I, I feel like I match up pretty well. I mean, yeah, I think he did. He depends on like overwhelming his opponents. Um, but I just feel like I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't get overwhelmed. I mean, yeah. you gotta know that when you're fighting him, he's trying to go in for the long haul. So I mean, you gotta be smarter. Mm. And he's trying to like, I mean, the guys he's beating, like, I feel like they're technically better than him. But you know, he just he gets you to that point where you're fatigued, and mm. then and then you slip. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think that'll be a I think that'll be a great matchup, yeah. just because I mean, one, I'm I'm, I'm I'm I stay technical boxing, and I wouldn't like I mean I'm a wrestler, but I mean the way I fight him is I'll keep him on the feet just because you know I, I I I wouldn't get as um can be smart about it and stuff like that. You can be smart, pick your shots, mm. and let him get fatigued trying to chase me. You know, mm. let him t- trying to take you down or. Or whatnot. So I mean, if that was a fight that I didn't allow, yeah, I'll take that fight. Yeah, because he, uh, you know, him beating Mursad. I mean, Mursad's a legit dude. I was actually thinking maybe you and Mursad, but it's like he's coming off a loss, and it's like, what about Damon Jackson? You, know, you could go in there and you yeah. know take all that, that uh, you know, that steam that he got from you know over that win. So, uh, well, I guess if, if you guys, well, yeah, like I mean, I would like to fight like somebody, somebody like Chase Hooper. You know what I mean, somebody has yeah. a lot of height. Mm. He's, he's, you know, and. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just like to steal his height. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be that'd be fun. I got I got a lot I got a lot of notoriety off of that last fight, but mm. I mean shoot, I would just box the heck out of him. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, body kicks, yeah, those cannot, body kicks that you throw, man. Yeah, you can hit him with a flying knee like they did to his father. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot. Ben Askren. Yeah. Ben Askren <laughs> Jr. Oh man. So hey, so um so Kai, you mentioned the UFC PI. I seen a picture on your Instagram with you and Dan Ige, uh, another top level high Hawaiian. Uh tell us a little bit about the work that you got in at the UFC PI. I know it's a beautiful facility, so mm-hmm. I'd love for you to dive in a little bit. Uh, you know, what what kind of work you got in there? Yeah, so um my main thing um right after the fight, you know, you hear you hear all the good stuff about the PI was getting in with the nutritionist, seeing if one forty five was the right way for me and like they 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 came back and with all my stats and they're like 145 is like the perfect weight class for me like everything everything for to be 145 all my nutrition diagnostics was in like the 100 percentile Mm. and to me that was great because i I knew like they didn't that told me that i wasn't small for the weight class i was cutting just the right amount of weight just the right amount of water yeah and you know they they they're happy with it, and I was like, shoot. I mean, because I I you know what I mean when when you when you get into the bigger level, you feel like sometimes you feel like, wait, should I go back down to one thirty five? And you know what I mean, like yeah. mm-hmm. to the, be the bigger guy, and then so I, yeah, I thought about that, like <clears throat> especially when I was um before I right like right before right after my last LFA fight, I was thinking about that still yet, and then um. Yeah, so I got that in there. Um, I was just, I was just um, doing some physical therapy because my eye was like still, still bust up. Mm. Um, red, yeah. So I did like some red light therapy, and then they were working on my hands. Mm. Um, yeah, they're, the physical therapist working on my hand, and then pretty much just like strength and conditioning diagnostics. They tell you like where you rank in your weight class based on, based on like certain exercises, oh, wow. Wow. stuff like that. Yeah, That's legit. Um, it's like a hell of a facility then. The fact that you guys get access to something like that seems really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. So, yeah. the reason why I um, I didn't fly home right immediately because I was already in Vegas before I got the fight. Oh, and that's kind of so I fought LFA July thirty first, <laughs> and then I I my plan was to stay in Vegas. You know, roll the dice on myself in Vegas. Mm-hmm. My grandma lives in Vegas, so I was she, she was in Hawaii, so I was living in I was I was living in Vegas. Yeah, and um. Yeah, this was all pre-planned, mm. and then August 11, I got to call to fight in the UFC, and then so I did, that's why I didn't go home immediately because I was already living in Vegas. Yeah. Um, and then I I chose to um yeah uh, use the PI for like the week and a half after then I came back. Oh wow, so that's that's a solid uh solid outing in Vegas, two two fights in two weeks, and then uh, a week and a half at the PI. Yeah, that's freaking awesome, man. <laughs> Good stuff. Hey, I want to ask you about your relationship with uh, your cousin, Ray, Ray Cooper. Uh, yeah, Ray Cooper. Um, man, what a beast he is. How is it training alongside him? 
Oh, it's scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scary. Uh, oh. Scary dude. Um, me and him is like, we're, we're super tight. Like that, that's, that's my guy. Like that's my, yeah, that's, that's my guy. That's like, he, he, it is, it, we're, we're, we're like closer than best friends. So you can't even call him my best friend. Like, oh, yeah. Um, he knows, he knows everything. He, um, he knows, and especially, oh, shit. especially <laughs> in fighting, he knows me like the back of his, um, you know, he, that he's a re- the reason why he's in the corner. He, he knows me mentally. He knows mm-hmm. me um, technically. So that's yeah, that's the reason why he's um, he's always with me. But yeah, it's pretty scary training with him. <laughs> that's what's it up, actually, man. It actually um, maybe it's kind of like too dangerous because like some guys like at one forty five, I don't like when I was tired, I wasn't even moving my head against Tony Kelly. Probably because he doesn't hit as hard as Ray Hooper. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love everything you just said because, like, you know, like Bobby told you, we're all about, like, positivity and motivation and, like, you know, you ha- being around a guy like Ray Cooper and he knows everything about you, it's like you've put yourself around the right people that you need to put yourself around to be your best self. Mm. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, other than my wife, my, like, a few people, like, it, within, like, the first three people, he was one of them to know. I mean, I don't know if you guys seen the video on instagram with my manager he posted that um when he when he facetimed me when he told me hey did you call ray and i was like what what, what do you mean that i call ray mm. and he was like yeah you should call him because you got into the ufc because you're in the ufc oh shoot and like, that's so that's awesome. how he surprised me and stuff um, <laughs> so yeah he knows that we're super tight and um mm. but yeah me it's, it's crazy because me and him we like if you can see like we fight a little bit different right I, i'm a I'm little bit of uh like if what is that called? He, he's like a he's like a chainsaw. You mm. know what I mean? Compared to like and then I'm like a I'm like a scalpel, right? As you know, as far as fighting stuff. You're very you know calculated. I mean? like, yeah, yeah. Very calculated yeah, approach. But but we're still going forward. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're still we're still pushing the pace. Mm. But yeah, like but like some my thing you need that in the toolbox, you know what I mean? So he knows everything about me. I know everything about him. But there's just a little thing, I mean, the style is a little bit little bit different. Yeah. <laughs> Man, it's awesome because Hawaii, the Hawaii. I just feel like everybody's close. I mean, I was looking through your page. I see BJ Penn was commenting on it. Man, he put a little. Uh, oh yeah. Two, uh, BJ you know. Penn, like he grew up. Oh, well, I mean, I grew up around him. Right when he, like, when I was a little kid, he was kind of like starting out his his MMA career. Right, he was fighting like Carl Uno and everybody, <laughs> and like he would come to him grappling tournaments, uh, my grappling tournaments. So I mean, we're pretty. We have a good relationship too. Oh. He comes to my house like every every now and then. Oh shoot. So. Awesome. That's badass. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's freaking badass, man. Yeah, it's a real small it's a real small community. I mean, it's a big one now, but everybody's pretty tight. Yeah. So what about some other guys I'm gonna name drop? Uh um, you know, maybe if you see a lot, Luis Smolka and you know, Yance Medeiros, you see uh, those I used to also before guys like Luis Smolka, Russell Doan. Russell um, Doan. We right. all used to be on the same team, like back then. Us, me, Ray Cooper, like, we all used to, like um, back then. And then, think well, you know, life life came and you know took us different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, a bunch of us used to be on the same team. Oh. And then for a while, I cross trained with um Max and um, Max Holloway, y- yeah. Yancy them, Yancy them a lot. Me, me and Max used to fight on the same like kickboxing cards growing up, because mm-hmm. he's only like three years older than me, so. Yeah. You train at, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, I'm not, 808 Fight Factory, correct? Uh, that used to be our old gym where we all used to train at. Okay. Uh, okay. But now it's just pretty much just um, me, Ray, my brother, his brothers, that's it. Mm. That's what's up. So, I mean, no. keep it small, keep it tight. Uh, yeah, yeah, so for my last, yeah, so like the past three years, it's been like that. There you go. That's what's and up, man. Seems to be working. Yeah. It works out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it works out better. I mean, as far as as far as accountability yeah. and mm-hmm. stuff like that, but like we do every workout together, we we every so you know who's gonna be at practice, you know, you know who's who's not ready to fight. Yeah. I mean, we can be honest with each other. Uh, we can tell each other techn- like when we're giving each other advice, like you know, we take it right on the chin, and you know, we take it at heart. So it's it's better to. I mean, it's, it just works out better. I mean, there's nothing. I mean, yeah, it's personal. You know, it's as personal as you can get. You know what I mean? It's right. not like oh, it's nothing personal. Yeah, it is personal. I mean, mm. that's the, but it's it's the there's the reason. I mean, it's just it's just way better. We're not taking it from a like a different. You know, you I mean it's, I don't know. It's just different. Like 
I come to practice, I know who's going to be there. Yeah. We're all different and we're all good at different things too. So, I mean, it just works out. So it's like you take care of each other. You're not like, yeah, that, I mean, a random like people. we do like, we do like freaking mountain runs with, I'm doing it with my family. You know what I mean? And mm. like, it feels like a hike almost like right. a Sunday right, hike right. because I'm, but it, what we're, what we're training, like we're getting there like two and a half miles to the top and two and then two and a half miles out. And like, it's awesome. But we're going as fast as we can. But, when you look back, we took a picture at the top. It's like, the fuck, we went hiking. We didn't fucking. <laughs> it's like you're just loving what you're doing. It doesn't yeah. even feel like work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, awesome. it doesn't it doesn't feel like work. I mean, doesn't. Yeah, exactly. And it's 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 just better because I don't know. There's no drama. Mm, true. I mean, true that. There's drama. Like we saw it right there. You know, mm-hmm. we're sparring. Like we go hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's like us. We the, got some gloves here. We might spar later. Get yeah. get our frustration. <laughs> yeah. Like we will like we'll go super hard. My mm. uncle my uncles will tell us after right after the round, like, hey, um, you know, tone it down or mm. or keep 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 your head together. But you know, he's gonna let it go. You know what mm. I mean? A little right. bit. Right. And At the end of the day, you guys all have each other's backs. Been. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's just a little bit different. I, I every practice is like that. You know what I mean? Like people can say that. Mm. Like, oh, they can say it. They like theoretically they can say, um, oh yeah, like I'll go to I'll do this for my teammates. You know what I mean? It's just, <clears throat> but I don't know. It's just different. Would you really? You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Yeah. No, you feel it. Like, you don't just say you yeah. feel it. You, it's 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 real. Yeah, every guy. You know what I mean? Like, right. every, like, so did, Ray has three brothers that um, we all, you know, we, we train with, and then I have one brother. I mean, and they're only amateurs, but they should be pros. They're, they're as good as they yeah. They should be pros. Just They took different paths. Like one nineteen, and he's like probably the biggest one out of all of us, and mm. he's like all chiseled up. You know what I mean? And he and he's he's training with us. I mean, yeah. training with a UFC guy and mm. a PFL champion. So it's like, wow. I mean, he's getting some work in. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, I mean, and he's not he's not like he's not getting you know, hammered or tossed around. This guy's like this guy's like one seventy, but he's freaking all chiseled up. Um, <laughs> And, and he's good. He's a he's state champ wrestler. What's his name? Um, uh, McCall Cooper. McCall Cooper. Okay. Yeah. We'll keep yeah. an eye on him for sure. Hundred yeah. percent. I mean, he, he had, so I mean, they're looking to turn pro and stuff, but it's just the world. The world is in a weird place right now. So yeah, it's kind of hard to make that move. Yeah, I know everything. Anything outside the UFC or like you said, amateur. Getting an amateur fight right now is probably the hardest thing. Mm. Yeah, or the, the amateur is trying to like turn pros. That's the. I think that'd be the hardest thing. Mm. I mean, because the amateurs, when if you're only trying to stay amateur right now for a bit, it's kind of. I mean, you're not gonna turn pro, and you're not trying to make money right away anyway. Right. So, but I got like guy that's supposed to turn pro, especially like in March. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> like right when the pandemic started, mm. I mean, that'll probably change things. Oh, big 100%. time, and then they're trying to make money. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so, tough. It's tough. Hell yeah. So the most important thing. Most important thing. Oh, you like me to lead off with that? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we want to ask. Uh, since the premise of the show, the most important things we talk about positivity, motivation, all that stuff. We want to ask what you feel the most important thing is in your life um, to you know remain successful and to stay motivated and to stay happy. Um. I talk about this all the time. My wife, when I'm driving up to practice and um, just driving in general, I was like, I don't ever get bored of this. I like, w- w- like, with a, do I have to find a different hobby? Will, will, you know? So, but I think, I think, you know, it just has to always be fun. Whatever you're doing, you have to enjoy it, mm. and you have to be real about. It. You can't be like, you can't be going to your nine to five job and be like, yeah, I like this job, and try, you're trying to for it. like. I never chose like I, I got a degree and I and I, I literally like people were there trying to force me to do like do that job because yeah that's honest money like twenty bucks an hour right out of college you know mm. you know tw- like twenty one years old and like I I quit the job like before like the week orientation was up because <laughs> I knew like I wanted to do this and <laughs> it's been it's been four years already since that <laughs> since that week yeah. and um. I never like I never like feel like I made the wrong decision, and I even at every practice like I enjoy it. Um, every week goes by like after the UFC, I just got more hungry to go to practice. Uh, mm. So I think just you gotta enjoy what you're doing. You gotta have fun. I mean, there's gonna be times where it ain't fun, but you gotta find you gotta find it in in here. Like 
I don't know. I just got like, I got like a resurgence and like a re-energized feeling even after my LFA fight, after the UFC. Um, like, I don't know. It's just, you, you gotta be, you gotta have, you gotta have goals. Mm. You gotta, you gotta, I mean, reaching goals, the process takes, you know, it, it you can take a beating, you know, yeah. but I think you have to enjoy it. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta love it. You gotta love it so much that um, you end up hating it. But then you, that, that's the reason why you love it. You know what I mean? Nick Diaz. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I when I heard him say that, I and mean, you think about it, it's like, this guy that, I mean, you, that's exactly, I mean, that's exactly right. You love it so much, you end up hating him because you're pushing yourself to like certain limits. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that, and then you think about it, like, that's the reason why I love it. And the growth and the accomplishments that's how you know. That's that how you know yeah, that's how you know you love it. You mean, you went through you you went through all that just to just to um you know and could be just for nothing you know what I mean right. you just love what you're doing it's yeah. awesome so, yeah, I think you just, yeah you just gotta enjoy it you gotta love it and you gotta you gotta you gotta set goals you gotta have like little um little, little benchmarks here and then those little benchmarks may not even be anything like could be oh getting to the LF get fighting LFA fighting LFA yeah, I fought here. Just keep fighting here until I get into the UFC. You know what mm, I mean? Yeah. It didn't even seem like much because, like, mm. yeah, I couldn't been in the LFA for a few the time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So just little benchmarks, but um, goals. Gotta gotta enjoy. Gotta enjoy the process, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, you just gotta you gotta love what you're doing. That's what's up, man. Absolutely. That's what's up. So like, yeah, pretty much not setting yourself up for a huge fail. Like you said, setting small benchmarks. I actually have a problem with that. I set too big a benchmark and then I fall short. So man, hearing it from you, you know, you're at the UFC level and you've set little goals to get there, you know, whether it be, you know, getting the amateur fight, um, you know, fighting LFA, fighting, you know, and then finally against the UFC. So that's what's up, man. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, and kids, kids will keep you motivated. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> for a long time, for a long time, I, I, I was like, I was the the stay at home mom. You know what I mean? Like I I wasn't making the money. Um, this, this game is hard. Like my wife was the one working, and I was t I was dropping them off to or out there with me at training all the time. Yeah. And wow. I wasn't making the bread, but I knew this would pay off. She believed in me, and you know what I mean. I'm just glad I'm in a place where like I'm the I'm the one now. You know what I mean? I I can, I'm the one taking care of it like taking care of all of us mm, so awesome it's a good feeling yeah no doubt no yeah, doubt actually, that's i think that's the, that's the best feeling it's mm -hmm. like you don't feel like a deadbeat like i was training hard you know what i mean i was training food i was training full time doing full time fighter things right but i was getting part-time pay you know what yeah. i mean like but doesn't your, match up your wife believed and in you and she was able to she was able to uh make it work so it's, it's yeah. cool. So, well, I yeah. think everything's going to work out, Kai. You made it to the UFC. You're here. You know, you want to know in the UFC. And I think uh, I think the call is going to be ringing soon, man, because you bring the fight. You know, you're an exciting dude, and you're a high-level fighter. And uh, and I, and I UFC uh, Yaz Island, I mean, Fight Island, they're going to be looking for exciting fights. So I hope you get the oh, call soon, my man, you know. And, uh, man, I want to thank you for coming on. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I can't wait to continue this journey. I can't wait to get you on again and talk about, you know, continuing to uh, just continue to grow, man. We really appreciate your time. And, um, and yeah, uh, Bobby, whatever yeah, you no, want to say, my man. Very much appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I, enjoy, I enjoyed it. I mean, you guys asked great questions. I mean, some, some of the stuff, like, I mean, it was different from other people's questions. Different from other people's questions. I Sweet. mean, yeah. they just want to know, like, the same stuff to everybody. I'm not the one, the fight. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. and you know, like, oh, they want to ask me like, oh my, you know, like you guys didn't even ask about how I was living in Vegas. I kind of had to explain it, but I had to explain that like so many times mm -hmm. and put out into people. So it's, it was, you guys asked some good, some good questions. Thank yeah. You. We try to Thank get you. into your mind, you know, instead of like, uh, yeah. your, like your surroundings is, is important to we, but we try to dive into people's minds to, to, cause like I said, we're about mental health. We're about motivation and we both love the UFC. So it's like, we want to dive into it. We try to relate to uh, each other as human beings. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like I said, man, I'm, we're excited to watch your journey and we can't wait to get you on again, my man. Thank you. Thank you, brother. We'll no talk doubt. to you soon. Have a great day, brother. Thank you. No doubt. No doubt. That was freaking great. You want to just keep it rolling? Oh, I got to piss. Oh, okay.
All right, keep it, go. You piss, and I'll keep it rolling. All right, man, what a freaking what an interview with Kai Kamaka the third. Um, great question, great great interview, and I'm so happy he enjoyed it. Uh, these are the kind of interviews we want. These are the kind of uh, you know even flow, um, you know work off each other kind of you know, and that was great. Thank you again, Kai, for the interview for your time. And um, that's we want to. That's what we want to continue to do on the Most Important Things podcast. We want to dive into the mind of the people um, out here, chasing their dreams, chasing what you know they feel that they should be in life, chasing happiness, chasing their goals, and chasing everything that they know uh, what their purposes of life is. And Kai knew that he wanted to be in the UFC, and. And he's making it happen. He, he's, he's making it happen every single day. He's fighting his ass off. He's training his ass off. He's got the right people around him. And that's what it's all about. You know, it's about putting yourself around the right people, doing the right things that you need to do to get to your next goal in life. And I really like that he said, you know, set benchmarks in life. Um, Travis, how, what did you think about that when he, when I asked him about that? About you know setting because I ha, like I said I, I set myself up sometimes for failures and I want to get a little bit of Travis's view on that. No, I think it's super important. I think you brought up a great point about you know just not setting your goals, just making everything achievable. Mm. You know because otherwise you you know you you just you get down you know um, because you never seem to be achieving the the ultimate goal. You know but. You know, take little tiny steps, man. You know, set set little bars, achieve it, and the more you achieve, you're gonna start feeling better about yourself. Mm. You know, so true, true so freaking true, man. That <laughs> hey, was man. great, dude. That was awesome. That man. was freaking awesome, man. Kai Kamaka the third, my man. Freaking excited to great. watch him uh, progress and grow and just become more and more of a UFC star. Oh, I can't wait, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun watching him grow because the guy's a skilled fighter, and he and I feel like he knows what he wants in his life. Yeah, and uh, I hope he gets the call soon too. Yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, hopefully before a Fight Island's over with, you know. Yeah, but, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Um, so yeah, so back to uh, you know, back to the podcast. The most important things. Uh, what do we got on the slate here, Bob? Well, we were talking about goals. Um, I want to ask you about goals because I had saw you. Posted on Facebook last week that uh, you were going to participate in uh, the famous Sober October, made famous by Mr. Joe Rogan. Did he originate it? I don't think he originated it. I'm sure somebody else originated <laughs> it, but I don't know. He's got the platform, and him and all of his dick friends decided oh, they wanted to not do drugs for the whole month. So. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> I love it. I, I, I respect it. the shit out of it. Yeah. Uh, but, so, it's what? October? It's October 5th. October 5th. Is it a 5th days? or 6th? It's the 5th. Yeah. Yeah. I've been going good. I haven't drank or smoked, and wow. those are the two um, the two those vices. Are the, those are the killers. And gambling, uh, yeah. gambling is something that I plan to stay sober for all of October's yeah. for the rest of eternities. Oh yeah, I was um, actually going to say I was. I'm extremely proud of you. You gave me a call last week, and you were very happy to tell me that you made a, a couple hundred bucks doing some work, and you yes. didn't gamble it away. Yes, and let's let's touch on that, man, because yeah. um, I came on this podcast last Monday, and it w it was a good podcast. You know, it was good. Yeah. Um. But it wasn't great, you know, in my mind. I might have made it seem as good. <laughs> but today is great. Today is a great day. So I want to get into that a little bit. So Tuesday, I had um, worked all day uh, doing vinyl siding. And um, I work for Heritage Drill Modeling. And after I worked all day, though, I had put on Craigslist, I put on Facebook Marketplace uh, some windows that I need to sell because we're clearing out a shop because we're selling it. And... Um, we're trying to clear it all out. So there were some windows that my dad told me to get rid of, and I got a buyer. So after working all day, I uh, had some extra money to make after work, which was, uh, you know, after work on Tuesday. And in my mind, I'm like, okay, extra money. Uh, I'm going to gamble that because I'm a gambling addict and I have a gambling problem. So that's, what extra, that's where extra money goes. Yeah. So after working all day, I went home fast. I ate, and then I... Um, and then I went to go sell the windows. And like I said, on my way to go, on my way to sell these windows, I'm like, I'm gonna gamble this money. Um, I got the money. The guy handed me the money. I swear to God, uh, Bobby, I went from feeling zero to a hundred real quick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but literally, I went from zero to a hundred as soon as he passed me the money. And the way I was interacting with him, I felt my mind was clearer mm. in that moment. It was so weird. Because, like, on the ride there, I'm just like, all right, I'm going to sell these windows, whatever, I'm going to gamble it. But as soon as he gave me that $200 in cash and, like, knowing that it was, like, a little extra money in that day, 
I don't know, man. I just did not have the desire to gamble it away. And I had another task in cleaning out the materials truck. I needed to get it all out. Yeah. And because uh, my dad was getting rid of the, the materials truck because it was just kind of trying to clear everything out. And uh, I went from task to task, and I was able to move from task to task and 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 rise above the evil. Yeah. Not only rise above the evil, but stomp out the evil, hey, as we all know. Hell yeah. So in that stomping of the, out of the evil, I, I went and ran five miles, Bob. I ran five miles. I went and ran two, actually, or three. I ran three, went to my house, talked to my buddy Kobe. Shout out to Kobe, because I'm sure he'll be watching, because he has been watching. Hey. Go Heat. He's, he's a big Heat fan, and he, he blows my messages up with, like, rants of Heat, and I just <laughs> look at him, I just laugh. So, mm-hmm. go Heat. Uh, Kobe, I hope you can get the win with the Heat. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I'm talking to him, and he's training in his garage or wherever he trains downstairs, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go uh, I'm gonna go run a little bit more. So I went down to the track. I ran two more miles, Bob. Oh, shit. Yeah, I ran a 14-minute mile, which is terrible. Because I, I run, and then I walk, and then I run, and then I walk. So my last mile, I'm like, I'm just going to run. I'm just going to uh, jog, like very slow jog, and I want to get under a 10-minute mile. Yeah. So I'm jogging, I'm jogging, I'm jogging. Uh, I go around three times, which what I think is four. And um, and my, my I'm, I have the, my fit, I have the uh, my, map my run out. Yeah. And I'm going around the three times, and I'm jogging the whole time, So which is new to me. Yeah. So I'm going around the fourth mile, and... Um, and I thought it was the fourth one, but it was really the third one. So I'm like, oh, my God, I have one more. You Because I look at my phone, it says 0.75, and I'm like, oh, my God. But I didn't give up. I, I kept running, and I got that 10-minute mile. I think I had, like, 9.30. So I was, I was very proud of myself. So I ended the day on actually the strongest, shortest mile. Which Hell yeah. Pretty cool. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Very happy to hear that. What do you, what do you think – caused that state of flow that you were able to experience that day. like because i just said going from task to task keeping and rising busy. through the evil yeah yeah and yeah. like uh like um like kai said uh he said it with not saying so many words but structure yeah. i mean what he i forgot exactly what he said but I, I could feel the word structure at the end of his tongue mm, yeah um oh, what did he say he's i will have to look at it afterwards but he was pretty much saying structure, and it's like you have to stay structure. Yeah. Oh, stay busy. He stay just said busy. stay busy. Keep yourself busy. Yeah, yeah just keep yourself Absolutely. busy. You know, as long as you and, – and like you and Travis were just talking about the small benchmarks, and we, we had mentioned not last week but the week after, but small consistent steps. And if you have your day filled up with things to keep yourself busy and consistent and productive, the day flies. Yeah. And, and the negative thoughts don't even – They don't even have time to – Yeah, you're just – you're so zoned in. It's, uh, it's called the state of flow, and – um, lots of great books on it. Um, I'll be happy to leave some in the comments. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, fuck yeah. Carl Sagan. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? Uh, so, so listen, we have to talk about my appointment that I had made. That's true, because that is... Mental health. That's uh, three days away, right? Two no, days, it's, no tomorrow. it's tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow. Shit, yeah, I was trying to figure out what this will be. This will be released on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is uh, videotaped on Monday. Uh, so it being Monday today... Uh, I'm going to have it tomorrow, and then I'll talk about it next week on the podcast. Cool. So it being Monday, it's tomorrow. The The mental health, um, I'm going to talk to a mental health specialist tomorrow, uh, and then this will be released to, uh, Wednesday. This podcast will be released Wednesday, and I'll talk about it next Monday. Yeah. But, so this is like the pre-appointment episode. Yeah. So I want to dive in about how I made this appointment on a low you know what I'm saying? Like I came in and I'm like, yeah, Bobby, I made a, I need to make an appointment. Mm-hmm. I need to go talk to someone and you know, just like, and I'm like, I'm like listening to myself and I'm like, uh, I got to get through it. And you're like, yeah, man, you'll get through it. And, um, you know, looking back on it, I'm like, man, I was just so weak in that moment. And, uh, but I did have the strength to come here, which was good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I made I made the appointment on a mental low, and they they uh, they made it for three weeks later, and here I am three weeks later, and I'm feeling great. Anything can happen in three weeks. Anything can happen in three weeks, you know. Yep. And they gave me that that time to almost gather myself. You know, I needed them in that moment, right? You know, but I was able to fight through it, and uh, and and you know, and I'm blessed that uh, I was able to get through it, and I hope I can keep it rolling. Yeah, you know, and like I said to you the other day, I think it's important that um, you're going into this now with a slightly different mindset than you did when you made the appointment, because yeah. you know you've been at both ends of the spectrum, and you can, you can, what's the word? Find it's, that balance. You, you can find the balance, but you can explain that to the professional who you're speaking with, and they yeah. can, and that that can kind of help them understand a little bit more about where you're coming from yeah. and how to 
and work on these problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because no, like, yeah, I've, I've been in a low, and <laughs> right now I'm having a great time. Well, you know what's funny? I'm excited to go talk to them yeah. uh, even more now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I was like I was like uh, I don't know the word um, that I was when I made it uh, in that mental like low mindset, but now I'm like excited because like you know I'm just a little bit happier now. Yeah. You know, so I'm able to go there. Yeah. I, think you're gonna, I think you're gonna get a lot of good shit out of it. So. I think I am too, man. And 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 to anybody out there, um, go talk to someone. No matter what mental state you are in, if you feel the need to go talk to somebody, because there's nothing wrong with it. When none of us are mental health experts, except maybe mental health experts that have all, that have been reading up on it for years. I mean, we're we're picking their brain in an hour's time. Um, you know, it, whether it be an hour a week or something, but these people have, um, you know, studied up on the human mind for what, four, five, six, seven, eight years. They've read books that we haven't. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if I can get a little bit understanding of my mental place because of all the time that they have put in, then why not? You only, we're only going to get good out of it. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. So I'm excited to go see them. And, uh, so yeah, so that's yeah. that. Good. Um, how was your weekend? It was good. It was yeah. good. I played baseball yesterday. Yeah, you're, so you're in a you're in a kind of like a league, but it's it's a like, vintage baseball vintage league. Baseball. Uh, there's no um, like playoffs or anything, but it, it's comp- you play for the spirit of the game. Yeah, you know, you play to, for the respect of the game. You, you play dress a, up and all that shit. Oh, it's so fun dressed cool. up. This was actually overhand hardball. Yeah, the ball was a little bit softer. I played first base. My mm. hand was like... I was no getting, gloves, right? No gloves. Yeah. No gloves. So we're in Sturbridge. There's a uh, historical museum just over the over the road here. It's called Old Sturbridge Village. Oh, yeah. My oh. father worked there for years, so I was born and raised, grew up there, was there all the time. And oh, every, wow. every 4th of July, my family would dress up in like the historic clothes, and yeah. we would play baseball. Oh, wow. There was no gloves, and I'm playing with these grown men who are <laughs> whacking the ball, and I'm this, like 12-year-old kid trying to catch his hard-ass ball. Oh, my God. But, yeah, this savages back then huh and it was so fun bro like there was a uh there was an all-star game a few weeks ago that i actually didn't go to because i wasn't in the right mental place and i didn't want to go i don't want to go places and like bring people down so i was so happy that uh i was able to drag myself out of that bad, bad mental place and be able to play uh sunday because i had so much fun yeah and so much fun man even though we lost both games but it was still we only lost by a few runs but we still put up like 10 runs each game nice and i played first base i had a lot of good plays a lot of good catches a lot of good i even had one i dove for i was like ah and uh everyone even one dude brett he's like man that was the best play i've ever seen in my life <laughs> there you go okay so, yes. i used to be on a i used to be in a dodgeball league dodgeball yeah dodgeball league oh wow it's pretty cool no shoot Play with a bunch of grown men and like it was the old school hard rubber balls it was like one of those like soft foam balls yeah, yeah, so yeah. like it was i when i played in high school it was like you know the smaller framed women and low smaller framed men because we're all freaking kids yeah, like, yeah, and yeah. it was only so hard you can whip the ball unless it was that like one strong kid but <laughs> when you play dodgeball with grown men they're like athletic men yeah <laughs> it's fucking rough dude oh like, my God. nailed in the face <laughs> you're a savage bro you're a yeah, savage you know um, yo, I want to touch on um, something that you told me that you want to do after I told you that I want to do. Uh, hopefully everyone knows here. Or if you don't, you can go check them out. Uh, you know, I did 20 open mics last year, about 20, about 15, 16 of them, and they're on YouTube. And they're really bad, you know. Um, I was sticking to a script. I was practicing the... Uh, so what were you doing for the open mics? What was the actual... I was doing my America's Got Talent kind of skit, you just know? like your motivational... Yeah, we are all champions. We are all aces, uh, you know? You know, if anybody wants the link, contact me and I'll show you the link. Mm. Um, we still good, Travis? Ron? Yep. Okay. Um, so, oh, I thought Travis was going to take my spot. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I'll see how you behave. Oh, man, he better not. Never. Oh, okay, good. I thought you were trying to replace... Nope. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Just kidding, bro. Just That's kidding. sketchy. I mean, Just you better kidding. not replace me. I here. would never consider it. I mean, I drive an hour to come here. If I, I was to ever be replaced, man, that's, you know, I understand. That's, I'd be pissed, bro. I know. You know? I know. But I think you'll get over it. Yeah, I'd get over it. Yeah? Because so, you, you got that mental clarity now. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, so back to my thing. So I told you that I wanted to go to the open mics, and you being a musician, you don't go to open mics. You have gigs. You have paid gigs. And you told me that you would literally come with me to, to my open mics to bring a little bit more entertainment, man. And I uh, appreciate that a lot, you know, yeah. and I think yeah. it, would, it would be a great show, great, you know, it would be great. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, I'll do a little bit of motivational comedy and, you know, spit you. I'll build you up. And, yeah, and then I'll play some tunes. 
Yeah. yeah. Man, I'm all about that shit. You know, yeah, I play gigs for a living, but um, it was just typically like weekends and. Oh yeah, late that's night. right. That's that's you why know, I so. made it so easy. Yeah, we'll do it on like a Monday or yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, I feel or like Wednesday. open mics are typically like Tuesday, Wednesday, something like that. So. Yeah, but yeah, that's I'm what's all up. about it, dude. Fuck no yeah. Doubt. I mean, even if I don't have a gig and it's a Saturday now, I don't give a fuck. I got nothing else going on. Yeah, so know? we'll just go Unless out. It's as... fight night. If it's fight night, I'm <laughs> sorry. Next yeah, yeah. I'll see you next time. Well, maybe we'll go to a place that is showing the fights, and you know we can you know. Motivational comedy. There you go. I'm like, I kind of want to. I called it motivational enter. No, what did I say? Yeah, motivational entertainment. But I feel like the word motivational kind of scares people. So I want to like yeah. entertainment, co- entertaining comedy or comedic yeah. entertainment or something like that. I like motivational comedy. Something motivational along those comedy. lines. Yeah, that's a yeah. Good because thing. I get what you're saying. Motivational. That word turns a lot like of people preachy. off. It sounds preachy. You know, people hear self development. When I tell people I read self help books all the time, they're like, "What? Oh, you guys, you fucking read those? Like what?" <laughs> You can't help yourself. Like, no, yeah. obviously not. I'm trying to find a book that I can We're help. trying to help. We're trying to better ourselves any <laughs> way we can. Um, um, yeah. Motivational comedy, something like that. Motivational. Mm. Yeah. We'll yeah shout out to Chris Farley, man. Rest in peace, Chris Farley. He, 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 I don't know if you know Chris Farley, but he, he passed away a, a while back. He was oh, yeah, best friends with Adam Sandler. Legend. And, uh, man, I watch his stuff from time to time. He was so funny, bro. He was so funny. He was so, there was, there was no filter. He yeah. was just so himself and just wild and crazy. And mm. you, you don't really, get that much anymore there's no. there's nobody else like him you know no no and it's a shame because he is he was i watch his stuff all the time man yeah. and it's great you know and you just he was going through a lot of mental stuff but. Yeah. and a lot of uh, a lot of the what seemingly seem like the happiest people are you know robin williams you know i know and they're not and they're, they're not they're not and they're know? not yeah so. it's just a shame yeah yeah i watched robin williams man of the year the movie yeah yeah it was it was pretty good yeah. it was funny there you go um there you go but uh but yeah, man, uh, you know, we're just going to bring the excitement. You know, I tend to have, uh, and I don't really have a plan. Uh, I, I just want my excitement to kind of co- like translate into a plan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of bring the excitement. So what do you think you can do differently this time? Because you, you don't seem to be um, ha- happy with your, your previous. All right. So yeah, I'm glad you asked that. So in my last one, there was no engagement. There was no uh, crowd engagement. Okay. You know, it was it was one crowd engagement in the beginning, and then I just like went off. I'd be like, "What's up, everybody? Hope you're having a great day today. How's everybody doing?" And everyone would, Woo! Um, and that was good. And but then I would get into my script, like acted script. So it'd be like, uh, you know, we're all champions, we're all aces, yeah. and uh, I think it just confused everybody. Uh, so yeah. now I kind of just want to like go up there, just like, like strictly engagement from the first word like i want to just be real yeah. like from the first step that i step on the the floor that to like till i get uh when i get the mic yeah. i want to i want to see how long the engagement can go like i said i don't necessarily want to even go up there with a plan yeah. i mean how many times do we come on this podcast and you know we have things to talk about i mean we just talked to kai for like a half hour 40 minutes yeah. and honestly i didn't even ask him one of the questions we were going to ask him about the matchmaker because i just felt like it it was just going so well, yeah. like everything else. Like honestly, the best moments of that were things that just kind of flowed. Like we started talking about his brother and his and the amateurs, and like you know the other guys that are around him in the amateurs, and right. you know his weight cut, his body, his mind. Like sometimes you just you need a plan, but like let excite let the plan come off excitement. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I mean, maybe I don't know. Maybe we should try this. Maybe we should take a uh, an improv class. Yeah. Do you have any interest in doing something like that? I would do it. Yeah, because I feel like that'll help, especially if you're going to be going into these open mics a lot more open-minded and less scripted, more of a read the room and uh, you know I can read the I, room. I, I can bounce off of this guy. I can bounce off of this guy. Yes. That, you know this person looks like she loves Tony Robbins, so let's mm. talk about Tony Robbins. You know, you yeah. know, whatever the case may be, but being able to read the room and, and bounce off of it, so maybe an improv class might help get yeah. comfortable doing that. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, that was the thing that I didn't read the room that good. Yeah. I would focus on the wrong people. I would focus on trying to. Uh, get people to pay attention to me rather than the few that were paying attention to me. And I yeah. look back, I'm like, what a fucking asshole I was because like, I bet you those people that were paying attention to me, there was one uh, open mic that this guy, Tony, uh, he was like really engaged and I could see him like engaged. He was an older gentleman and he's like, man, you're going to win America's Got Talent. Uh, I loved your act and I really did truly engage with him. And you know what? I'm going to tell a sad story about Tony though. Um, so he was like so happy and... Um, he he was actually going to perform too like he was performing after me and he does like acapella i guess he was telling me and uh and i was so excited to see it right and um i went to my car i went outside to my car for a second to charge my phone Mm -hmm. and um 
And as I was walking back to my car, as I was walking back inside, I had seen a few more people that enjoyed the show. And I was talking to them outside of the, the place. When I was outside talking to those people, Tony performed his skit. So I go back inside. And you missed it. And I missed it. And Tony's sitting there with like this distraught face. And I'm like, Tony, I'm like, I didn't miss your performance, did I? He said, yes, I did, and I'm never coming back. I said, Tony, I'm so sorry, man. I got talking to some guy outside. I'm like, I truly, truly apologize. He's like, I don't care. I'm, I'm not coming back. I'm like, Tony, I'm like, man, I want you to come back. I want to see your act. I truly apologize. I got, so, I got talking to somebody outside, and oh, I didn't know you were going to be right after me. Like, I thought you were going to wait. And he's like, fuck you. Get the fuck away from me. And I was like, oh, my God. Bro. So I, I was talking to the bartender, and I'm like, like oh. off, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I need a drink. I'm like, oh, no. I just pissed off fucking Tony over there. I'm like, do you know that guy Tony? He's like, yeah, he's got, he's got a little bit of, uh, you know, he deals with a little bit of problems. He always says he's, he's never coming back. Like, I guess he does that every week. Oh, yeah. He, he says he's never coming back, but then he does. But, man, mm. I felt so bad, bro. That I missed Tony's performance. I'm never gonna let you live that down either. Oh, I'm gonna dude. Be, every time you do something, I'll be like, "Remember that time you missed Tony's performance?" <laughs> I felt so bad, man. Like I, I, I honestly did. Like I did not think he was gonna be directly after me. Like, yeah. and I wanted to see what he was gonna do because, like, oh man, he was so pumped. He's like, um, he's like, I'm gonna have the best performance, you know. And it was just like, you know, like his best performance yeah. after seeing me. And I'm just like. And I even did a video with Tony. I was like, what's up, everybody? I'm here with Tony. This guy is the man. Mm. I'm so grateful to be, you know, in this man's presence. And he had, like, his arm around me, and he's smiling. That's and awesome. I had seen him earlier in the night, and he was, and I could see that maybe he had some problems because he was, like, kind of, like, like pissed and standoff, standoff, standoffish to the, um, to the bartender. And he's like, I want a drink, and just, like, looked pissed. Yeah. And, I, and I was able to, um, to enlighten his, his mood a little bit, you know, for that moment. And then I, I just feel like I let him down. Yeah. And, dude, like, honestly, I felt it, it ruined my night that I let him down. Like, I was just, like, so let down that I let him down. And, like, and then, like, you know, a few people were like, oh, don't let it get you down. And he's like, that guy's like that. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I hope he comes back, though, because I honestly be like, Tony, like, do you remember me, man? Like, I came back because I want to see your performance. Yeah. You yeah, know? I'm and, sure he'll appreciate that for sure. Yeah, I hope I do run into Tony someday. So. Sweet. Yeah. Shout out to Tony if you're watching. Yeah, shout out to Tony. Um, so yeah, and it's and it's those uh, kind of stories that um, that you know, I don't know. It, it, what's gonna make us different, Bobby, on this podcast? You know, it, it's just be me and myself, me you being yourself, and uh, me being honest. Like you know, I let Tony down, yeah. but I'm not afraid to say it because that's just that's just what happened. You know, right. I let him down, and you know, I can be man enough to be like, yo, I let Tony down. Like I'm sorry. Like, I hope to run back into him and, and, and make his day. Like, I almost did at one moment before yeah. I, you know, went outside and was charging my phone and was talking to other people and wasn't able to catch his performance. Yeah. Um, uh, well, <laughs> I'm, like, jumping around all over the place, but this is what podcasts are all about. What separates us, Bobby, from the millions of podcasts, the millions and millions? We got, like, a Q and, like, a rock thing yeah. right there. Um. Hmm. What separates us separates from us. all these other podcasts? Because there are so many different podcasts out there, podcasts, Bobby, that yeah. people listen to because, you know, that's their that's their thing. Those are their people. Like, yeah. you know, we want to gravitate, um, you know, good people. Uh, we want to uh, be the voice in their head to, you know, um, what's Kevin thinking? What's Bobby thinking? Because he's the one. They're the ones that, you know, push me and, and help me believe in myself. And and. And I want everyone to know that we are always open. Like, our inboxes are always open. Our DMs are always open. If you need someone to reach out, like, we are here. Like, I try to message everybody as prompt as I can so it doesn't um, doesn't overflow. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I can answer someone back in the moment, I'm going to answer you back. Yeah. You know? Even if it's 6 o'clock in the morning, 7, 30, 7, you know, 4 o'clock, if I'm up. Yeah. You know? There you go. I mean, I think what separates us, I mean, especially with there being so many podcasts and so many motivation positivity you know specific podcasts. right i think very much the difference is the fact that you and i aren't professionals in like any given field you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying we're two normal dudes we're speaking from experience we're speaking from you know we're we're being completely transparent we're talking about our daily struggles our you know the stuff we're experiencing day after day mm -hmm. and and we're like we've said before on this podcast is is we're hoping people can watch us grow. 
yeah. on this podcast. Yeah. Um, you can literally look at episode one where Kevin was uh, almost, What's up, everybody? almost 30 something. I was going to get at almost 30 something year old guy living with his parents, yeah. you know, because you talk about that. Yeah. And then in fucking six months, like, yeah. You know, Shit's going, See where shit's I'm going at. smooth because, See where I'm at. because you've been able to set goals on this podcast. You've been able to look back on those goals and be able to hold yourself accountable. Mm. And yeah, I think, I think the realness and just the, the relatability is what sets us apart. And the fact that we've got this beautiful studio, shout out to Travis Gordon of Brandis Center Studios in Sturbridge, Massachusetts. 100%. Uh, if you're looking to start a podcast and you're within a vicinity of Sturbridge, Massachusetts, please give us a call. Yeah, yeah, we, we you can put up any of the things that you want to put up, mm-hmm. and uh, and yeah, man. What do just, you think makes us stand out? What do you think? Well, you, what I respect about you, Bobby, is that Bobby AGT, Bobby. Can I use your last name? Sure, Bobby Cook. This is a man right here that has two kids. This is a man right here that is married. This is a man right here that wakes up at 4 o'clock and goes to an IT job. This is a man that also is a musician that spends a lot of time practicing his music. Um, I'm not going to look you in the eye while I'm saying all this because it's weird. Um, <laughs> so this man right here, though, he with all those things, like I said, he makes his music and then he has gigs every Sat Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, right? Well, for the most part, right now, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and during this, you know, weird times. I mean, um, but but he still makes time for me uh, on this to do this podcast every Monday, and it truly, truly, truly means a lot. Are you gonna cry? Yes, I might cry. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I got a lot of shit going on, but. It's a balance. We talk about it, finding a balance. And um, funny enough, Kai Kai was talking about it himself. He had such a great support system in his wife, yeah. and his wife was making the money while he was putting the work in. Yeah. And I like I like to think I'm in a similar because yeah, I do I do have all these other projects. I work my um, IT job, but that's very part time. That's like 12 hours a week max. Uh, a couple out a couple hours early in the morning, which kind of can throw off the day. I get up super early, but um, other than that, I've got a good chunk of my days open, um, mm-hmm. which I can. Hundred percent, thank to my wife, um, and it's giving me the time to pursue projects like this, like a podcast, and to work on my music, and to be able to, you know, work with other artists and, and make instrumentals and record other art- artists, mm. and having a good support system like that is is monumental in me being able to do what I do. So that's what's up, man. Yeah. No doubt. Shout no. out to my wife. Yeah, you're no a nice doubt. lady. Yes. Shout out to Shelby. Thank you for uh, giving the freedom to your husband to come and do this. And uh, so, yeah, so that's you. And um, what about you, man? Me, I just, you know, just showing people to never give up, you know, wherever you are in life. I mean, I, I could literally just give up on life, Bobby. You know, I could just be like, whatever. You know, I tried off America's Got Talent. I didn't make it. Uh, I tried to get a f- job with UFC, even though I didn't ask. You know, I, I got a video with Dana White, even though I didn't ask him. But he joined my Instagram where I should have brought him on, but should have, could have, would have. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I got a, I was working with, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about this right now. And you know, I haven't talked about it yet, six you've, episodes you've in. You've been but, hesitant to talk about it. Yeah, but you know, this is the reality. Um, you know, before the before the, uh, before this pandemic, um, I, I went to my local mixed martial arts and um, boxing organization, Classic Entertainment and Sports, and I was, and I asked uh, the owner, um, you know, I got a nice little fun video with him. And I said, you know, what do I got to do to get a position in your company? And I was in contact with him and his son. And uh, next thing you know, I was I was with the company. I was working alongside him, and um, and uh, and I, I don't I don't regret uh, you know anything about the experience. I mean, I went I was with them before this pandemic hit, and um, and you know I was going to press conferences. I was going to the weigh ins. I went to the fight. I had a you know media pass and everything, and I was uh, working my way in to hopefully. Uh, you know, accomplish all my dreams, Bobby, you know, be a UFC commentator or just, uh, I mean, not a UFC commentator, being a CES commentator and being a CES announcer or, you know, bringing as much value as I can to the, to the company, interviewing fighters, be on the podcast, uh, uh, you know, get, get sponsorships or all that good stuff for that company, bring as much value as I can. And, you know, when the, um, when the pandemic hit, you know, I stayed with them and, uh, I did whatever I had to do. Um, and I was introduced to a lot of, you know, great people. Um, and I was, like I said, I was working alongside the owner and we had a lot of good times together. We were going, you know, walking in the morning and, you know, uh, just doing a lot of things together, spending a lot of time together. And, uh, 
And, uh, you know, these last few months, I, I, I started the two mil 60 days thing. So I think that kind of, uh, that kind of like made them wonder like, you know, what I was doing. And mm. like, I started this podcast and, you know, started question like, you know, where I'm at and, yeah, uh, where your attention lied and where my attention lied. And, and, uh, you know, we kind of just went our separate ways after that. But I mean, on me, no hard feelings. He wished me luck. And, um, you know, I, I don't really have any hard feelings. Good experience. I would imagine. Great you experience. Know? Yeah. You, you, did what you have to do. You you tried learning the behind the scenes of a business that you're passionate about, and I mean that dream isn't like done. You know, not necessarily with CES, but working for any organization, yeah. MMA, boxing, you know, combat sports in general, yeah. still a entirely achievable goal if that's something you want to go for. Yeah, uh, and hopefully having a podcast like this where we can talk with MMA fighters and UFC fighters and stuff like that, maybe maybe it's going to grab somebody's attention and that opportunity might be there for you. I think so. so. Just got to keep working towards it. And I don't have any, like I said, I don't have any hard feelings. I mean, I like all the fighters on the on CES. I mean, like I have introduced no... introduced me to a few and, you know? Yeah. Yeah, or ex-CES fighters. Yeah, UFC Andre. Fighters, yeah. Andre. Yeah. Andre, you know, William Andre, Andre Sukadam as well. Yeah, Andre Sukumta. Yeah, uh, yeah, I was talking about Andre Yule, but yeah, yeah Andre yeah, Sukumta. Yeah. Um, and I hope to get those guys on the podcast so they can I can give them a stage to talk about you know their upcoming fight and and uh, you know talk about mental you know mental games and he mental health and motivation and all that good stuff. You yeah. know, what I mean, like there's no reason there should be any uh, you know ill will attention because I mean, like didn't end bad. I mean, it, it was what it was, and uh, you know, I I have life's funny, man. You know, I'm just. Uh, like you said earlier, man, I'm where I am in life right now. I've made a lot of prior mistakes, and uh, you know, I was given an opportunity by the owner, which I really appreciated. It. And he, you know, he uh, he believed in me, which made me feel great. Yeah. Um, and you know, getting belief from people means a lot in life. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I don't know. The pandemic screwed a lot of shit up, man. It sure did. You know, but uh, sure did. I'm still continuing to push forward, and uh, you know. I've said it before on the podcast a year ago, t a year ago, I didn't have a podcast, you know, it was only a dream. Now I have a podcast with my man, Bobby AGT, my man, Travis Gordon, my, you know, beautiful place, Brandis Center Studios. And uh, we just looking here to grow as much as we can and uh, <laughs> motivate the people, hey. inspire the people, hey. know to keep on pushing in life, hey. no matter where you are, nope. uh, no matter what anybody says that you can or cannot do and just keep pushing forward keep trucking yourself in the right direction and never ever give up on yourself because the only time you fail is when you give up we ain't giving up bobby no sorry no all right sorry. so we're going to the top and we're taking everybody with us you know we're all leveling up out here we're all continuing to grow and how is how are we going to continue to grow is just keep continuing to chase our dreams mm -hmm. and do everything that we need to do uh, to get there and, and just loving all the people around us. Support your supporters. Yep. You know, reach out to the people that are, that are you know, in your circle. Make sure everyone is well. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. And consistency and, like um, Kai said, loving the process. Loving the process, man. Just having fun with it. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we're doing out here, bro. There you go. You know, put in, out, put in the work. Put in the time. Um, you know, I, I want you to share the story uh, of when uh, I was on live uh, and you asked me about the podcast. Oh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I, we briefly touched on it. I don't think we've been overly specific on how we actually met, but it was just Kevin fucking posting shit on Instagram. And I was like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah. So I started following him. And then I would join his live chats and listen to him, you know, rant in his live chats. And yeah. One day... I was playing a gig, and we had just finished playing the gig, so I was in the bathroom taking a leak, <laughs> and then I'm watching this guy's live while I'm taking a piss, which is a little weird. <laughs> but then he invites me to go live with him, and I was like, oh, shit, I'm taking a piss. Pissed all <laughs> I'm over like, yourself. oh, give me a second. <laughs> so I put, put the phone down, and I'm like, oh, shit. Before COVID, so you didn't <laughs> right, even yeah, wash before, your hands. Yeah, I washed my hands. Oh, you Ran, did wash your hands? I did wash my hands. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 it's all good. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I go out into the lobby, and um, I go on the live with Kevin, and we're shooting the shit. We're talking about positivity and motivation i was kind of hammered because we got treated pretty well at that hotel oh, you treated pretty well and nice. uh, they, they gave us a bunch of good drinks and um so i was feeling good and then uh we got off the live <laughs> and then you were talking about a podcast and i was like oh we should start a podcast together i've been trying to start one for years blah blah blah, blah. and kevin just read it just went we should start a podcast together <laughs> yeah 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 and then just went on to the next <laughs> subject and i remember aj was next to me because we just got done and i was like oh okay and he's like what i was like this motherfucker doesn't want to start a podcast. <laughs> all right, all good. Talk to you later. <laughs> and then I asked him in person fucking five months later, and he brushed it off then, too. 
It's like, I, guess I'm, I guess I'm not starting a podcast with this guy. It's all good. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to have my uh, my good friend Travis fucking dump a bunch of money into a beautiful room and I'll start my own podcast. And then you'll be like, damn, I should have started a podcast with Bobby. Oh, my God. It's that is hilarious, man. Well, I'm glad everything worked I'm out. Glad you came to your senses, bro. <laughs> Three strikes, I was out. Yeah. I had two strikes. On me. <laughs> you, you asked me the third time once you saw this room come together. So uh, was it? I don't know. I don't even remember. It just it, it just came together somehow. Um, yeah. Man, honestly, how did it come together, bro? Like it was those two episodes. It was those two strikes. Yeah, those two strikes. And, um, I don't know. I think I had just been posting consistently because Travis had started building this room, and I was posting updates of it and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, it went from looking like just a basic office room to having these this cool background. Yeah. And I posted about it, and you were like, "What the fuck?" And I was like, "Yeah, starting a podcast, dude." And sorry, <laughs> not with you. <laughs> <laughs> and then I don't know. I don't know if you asked me or if I if I gave you one more shot, but. <laughs> One more shot. I guess one more shot was uh, <laughs> all it took. Now, now this is it. Now you're going to have to kick me out. Yeah. I already made copies of Travis's keys he doesn't know yet. <laughs> Did you do it like a promposal or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Will you marry me? Oh, boy. All right. So, uh, man, this has been a great podcast, bro. Uh, yeah, have we touched on everything that we I wanted to touch on? I, I don't think we should get into the fights this week. Cause, uh, yeah, let's uh, not touch the fights. I didn't because... pay too much attention to them. I, I had a busy weekend full of gigs. Played two gigs on Saturday. Uh, and then a uh, gig on Sunday, and, and never ended up catching up on him. But um, that's fine. I know Holly Holm had a hell of a win, tough fight. Oh my God! Yeah, she did. Yo, I want to touch on something I thought was funny. So oh. I was talking to my friend Jen there last night. She called me. Shout out to Jen there. Hey. So happy you called me last night. He talked to her for about an hour. Yeah, she's a beautiful girl. She's from Michigan. I don't know if she wants me to talk about it on, on this. But guess what? We are. We're not taking it out. <laughs> but she called me last night, and uh, we were talking for a while, and. Um, she was saying she was saying she wanted to make something to eat, and she said her uh, house was haunted because some of her like pans fell. <laughs> and I was like, um, I told her to make an omelet, and I was like, if, if and if it's bomb, then it's called a bomblet. So she likes to smoke weed. So so like I said, call it the bomblet omelet, and I'm lit. <laughs> So I just thought that was funny. That's funny. Uh, let me hold on. Let me just uh, see what else we have. Uh, episode six podcast. Uh, before we go, I mean, I, I want, like I said, I want to wish everybody uh, the best of best of emotions, best of vibe, be- best of energy, best of mood, best of everything this life or day of this world has to offer you. Even though we're in some crazy times, keep continuing to be your best self. Fuck the haters. Never mind what anybody says about you. You are the man. You are the woman. You are the king. You are the queen. You are the ace. Bah! Make those motherfuckers fucking dread ever doubting you because they should be doubting you. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely agree. And I made sure that I had a clear path yeah. and I hit anything. I'll get it. <laughs> Um, um, with that being said, I wanted to take this moment to talk about our official sponsor. Yes. Smith Anchor Apparel. Smith Anchor Apparel. Uh, go ahead, keep talking about them. Yeah, for all your customized shirts, T-shirts, hoodies, um, clocks, as you can see, the whole nine yards. Uh, they do it all. They'll you know, customize most apparel, most uh, items. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, give them a shout, Robert D. Smith. Check him out on Facebook. And his wife, Stephanie. And his wife, Stephanie. Um, so it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we have a shirt, Breast Cancer Awareness shirt, um, and this is going to be part of a giveaway for next week. Um, a little further. Oh, right there. Other way. Oh, this way. Okay. So it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and uh, we're going to be giving this shirt away on the podcast next week. So um, send me a message. Send Bobby a message, and we're going to just pick numbers from a, uh, pick a name from a hat. So please reach out to me. Reach out to Bobby. Uh, we want to make this a fun giveaway. Um, you know, so I have a little little you know little some names to pick out from the hat. Um, tell me you want to be in the in the the giveaway, and we will we will put your name on a little piece of paper. And it's going to be actually in this hat right here. Mm-hmm. Right there. Okay. So we're going to pick it from that hat. It's just the piece of paper, not the shirt. The shirt won't be in my sweaty has hat. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're going to be picking the names from the hat. So let me and Bobby know that you want to be included in the giveaway. And uh, it's a large shirt. It's a beautiful shirt. I think I just showed you the, the back. So let me show you the front. I mean, I showed you the front. Let me show you the back as well. So... 
So yeah, let's let's you know let's make this worthwhile. Send me your name. Send Bobby your name. And uh, if you win, uh, if your name is picking from the hat, then we will send you the shirt in the mail. And uh, you know you want a free shirt. Our first our first giveaway on uh, on our the most important things podcast. Yeah, so yeah. so send in your names, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, uh, what else, Bob? I know we've been, else, uh, we've, we've been we've been we've been on here. While, huh? We've been going here for a while. It's been a good podcast, it's my man. Nap time, really. Um, so uh, yeah, self assessment. Would uh would you uh would you rather be mad or sad? That's something I put. Yeah, you know what, man. Let's wrap it up. It's been a great podcast. Um, and what else, my man? If you want to take the reins, hey and- man, I got nothing else over here other than to obviously live every day the best you can. Yeah, have a good time and. Make sure you're having fun on the journey, people. We appreciate you listening to the Most Important Things podcast. Today we had Kai Kamaka on. It was awesome. Uh, appreciate his time and his efforts. Waking up so early just to talk to two Joe Schmoes like ourselves, <laughs> you know. But take it away, man. Do your thing. Thank you, everybody, for listening in. I love you all. I hope everyone has a great day today. And I will talk to you soon. <laughs> Jump in, the water's fine, it's a celebration No, we ain't stressing cause we on vacation Not a care in the world today, baby